Hi, I'm Greg McCone and I love IT service management. I wanted to talk to you today about incident management and about incident coordination and how our organization, <laughs> let's just edit that out, and how our organization used an incident resolution team to coordinate incident management and provide us with very effective management of incidents um, that were active. So just that, we had a dedicated team, it was an incident resolution team. Um, they didn't necessarily solve the incident, but they coordinated the incident. So they had that role of coordination. And this was a centralized approach rather than a decentralized approach. So rather than having whoever got the call trying to find the right people and bring them in to resolve an incident, what we had was a team that did this all day long, every day. So they knew who to bring in, they knew who to call, they knew where they'd get the information because all they did all day long was correctly resolve incidents uh, by coordinating the response. So they would function, if you imagine uh, at an airport, if you imagine an uh, air traffic controller. So that's basically it. So what would happen is they would be seeing an incident, they'd be assigning it to a group that could re resolve it. Maybe it would turn out that that group can't resolve it, that it's something special that a specialized group does. The communication came back to that IRT, to that incident resolution team, and they would then send that ticket back off to uh, the appropriate group that would resolve it. So we did a few things um, to make it really, really effective. Uh, the first was physical. We physically co-located the incident resolution team with the service desk. So the folks taking the calls were maybe 20 feet away from the folks who are actually gonna manage the coordination of incidents. And they were actually also about 20 feet away from the folks who did the user setup. A lot of incidents are around access. So they had resources close to them. And if there was a problem with the details that got recorded for an incident, they were 20 feet away from getting better answers. What else did he say? What didn't you write down in the ticket? That kind of thing. If there was a challenge with the quality of ticket recording, um, culturally that got dealt with pretty immediately because the incident resolution team uh, would give the other guys a hard, hard time. So if you can imagine a beach, you know, you have really shallow water and then it gets a little deeper and then it's deep enough to swim and then you're into the really deep stuff where you're over your head. That's kind of what that area looked like physically. So you had your service desk guys who were fairly green in terms of seniority, uh, being with us for several months taking calls and they would be job shadowed and, uh, and supported, mentored by someone who had more experience in that area and they would pass it on to someone who could have a little more expertise. So when it got to the incident resolution team, that team was um, very experienced having done all of the roles, the user setup, the service desk, uh, the site support, and um, actually that's interesting. They rotated between site support and being on the desk. So the coordinator roles would be out with the customers, um, providing site support. Because we're a very large healthcare organization, uh, that makes a huge difference because they um, had direct experience with the customers and they could empathize with the customers when the customers were having challenges. Um, it wasn't just a, a nameless, faceless uh, ticket number, right? So that was pretty important. So the location was pretty critical. And I think the most critical thing that we did is we also co-located representatives from each of the subject matter areas with the incident resolution team. So uh, there would be maybe a weekly rotation, that was the most common form, where a team would nominate someone to be on the desk that day. And that meant that instead of sitting in an office or in a cube someplace working on their projects, they would be on the desk that day working on their projects. And when someone said, hey, are all the servers down? Or is it just this one? The server guy would look up look right across the desk at the guy because we had uh, low barriers there and he'd be able to perform the test, clarify what the guy said, uh, blame network, um, network could then say it wasn't network and, and so on. And so in real time you had this what amounted to informal communication, uh, it was by design but it was informal, where the incident resolution team 
would highlight a problem, ask for assistance, and the technical experts sitting across the desk from them could provide details, um, confirmations, assistance on routing. Um, they could be looking up technical documentation in support of uh, correctly resolving the incident. So it was really good physical setup that we had. One of the other things that we did is, and you'll recall they have that air traffic controller role, we set up our ticketing system. We used HP Service Manager uh, version 7.2. We used it in such a way we customized the incident tickets so that they could have more than one assignee. So if you were a server guy and you got a ticket assigned to you, it might also be assigned to a network guy. And so the network guy sees it in his queue and he's working on it. You're the server guy, you see it in your queue and you're working on it. Don't worry, it's not confusing. You're just updating the details of that ticket. Truth be told, it never left the ownership of the incident resolution team. The ticket was owned at all times by someone on that incident resolution team. Whenever a server guy or a network guy would complete their work on a ticket, they would flip a status that, that they could see and that would update the ticket so that the incident resolution team um, in their queue immediately saw this ticket requires attention again. We need to review what took place and get it back in play. And so that was very effective. We helped them by putting up TV screens um, down two walls of the area the incident resolution team sat in. And so we were able to pull the top tickets um, for each area, for the south, the north, the west, we had a geographic distribution of responsibilities. And we could show them in the south queue, here are the tickets that nobody's working on because they've all finished their work and pushed it back to incident resolution team. So at all times they could report on the status of every incident because it was in their queue, visible on their screen. Um, and there was color coding and various other visual indications to help make sure that those did get managed so they'd be flashing on the screen sort of put me back in play coach so so that was a really effective um, piece of design work by customizing HP service manager and by putting in those screens that was that was pretty good so um, with the parallel assignment it allowed them to test um, if they weren't sure whether it was network or server, both groups could be testing that to get the customer back up and running at the same time. So we didn't have to create separate related tickets. Um, and so we maintained ownership of the tickets the whole time, but then we had this distribution that was really quite good. So another thing that we provided for them, again within about 20 feet, is we had their supervisors present in their offices. So if there was an escalation, a customer who simply uh, couldn't uh, accept the level of response that was being offered, uh, those supervisory staff were available. So they could support their staff, um, they could help the customer get what the customer needed. And that was, uh, that was really good. One more thing that we did uh, in order to empower incident resolution by a centralized team is within our incident management process, we defined um, a standardized scale for rating incidents. It was based on urgency and Impact. Impact is defined by number of users and urgency uh, defined in terms of how quickly it would deteriorate it into something with um, financial or um, direct patient care effects. That, that's our main business. So, so that predefined priority scale, that allowed them to prioritize work based on how big a deal it was, how big a problem that incident was, um, in a way that was actually decoupled from the customer's level of excitement. So you could have a customer who uh, really thought it should be a priority one, but it's only affecting them. You could have another customer who isn't really uh, excited about something, but the whole hospital site's out. So in those cases, that predefined priority scale is really effective. So I hope I've been able to paint a bit of a picture because we had designed a really excellent incident resolution team um, as a part of the process for resolving incident management, <laughs> resolving incidents at our organization. And uh, I hope that gives you some ideas if you're looking at how to structure your incident management and you're considering a centralized solution. Uh, those are some of the things that really worked for us. They were very effective. And when our uh, service desk guys, the incident resolution guys, would come back from trade shows and whatnot, 
they would always report that other organizations were baffled by how we handled the volume we did with the small number of staff that we had. And by small, I mean somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 50 service desk and incident people. So um, if, if that's catching you off guard, if this is the first video you've seen of mine, uh, just to be clear, we're a very large organization, 28,000 people and 130 plus sites, 10,000 plus desktops, um, 343 identified services, um, just very large, very complex. Um, so 30 to 50 is an incredibly low number uh, to support all of the IT services uh, for an organization our size. But it was really effective, that's my point. I wanted to send that home with you. So uh, thanks for paying attention and listening to this. Again, I hope it's ho helpful. I'm Greg McCone and IT service management is what I do. Take care.